Well, hey everybody, and welcome to Spring in Boston. It is April 30th, and I am happy to do my message for Mary for the April newsletter. So, um, what I figured I'd do is just recap April. It was an amazing month. Um, we kicked off the month with our very first master class focused on the healing environment. Um, we had a lovely turnout. Um, again, the classes are designed to be very small, so it can really foster a lot of um, individual interaction and then a lot of team building as well. So, it was a huge success. I hope you consider coming to the next one it'll be in July and um, it will focus on pain and stress the uh, masterclass series for 2018 is being hosted at Summerlin Hospital Medical Center in Las Vegas Nevada which is wicked awesome um, and the other really cool event that happened this month was um, I got to attend the National Association of Neonatal Therapists eighth annual conference brilliant conference um, just amazing speakers and one speaker in particular that I was um, able to uh, catch her presentation um, was Patty Bondurant. Uh, she's a PhD um, originally from Cincinnati and um, and now uh, at Texas in Texas and she's working with the American Academy of Pediatrics with a couple of her colleagues and um, they are partnered uh, nursing and medicine to do this thing around NICU verification to corroborate the uh, levels of care that d each NICU provides. So um, historically, the designation of what level you would be is um, has really been um, performed by the facility themselves, um, looking at the AAP's description and then say, oh yeah, we meet those things. But there's been some inconsistency and maybe some um, misunderstanding in what these levels of care really mean. So the AAP um, is, has run a pilot project of this NICU verification um, in Texas and um, Patty shared her experience and the results of it. And it just sounds really wonderful, exciting, really another opportunity to raise that bar and establish consistency, um, clarity around what does excellence look like in neonatal care at each level um, so that the facilities can really um, maximize the service that they're providing for the patients. So um, I, I got the uh, the recording of the conference proceedings. Um, if you if you're into that sort of thing, I would recommend you get it because I think her talk was at least worth the price um, of the uh, the recordings. So um, so that was wicked cool. And um, and you know other things here at Caring Essentials is just really looking at. Um, reestablishing rapport with clinicians, really reaching out to find out how can I best serve you? What are the needs that you have? Those pressing needs at that patient interface of care. Um, do you need support in how to translate those cl clinical priorities to the C-suite folks, you know, who have a kind of a bigger view of what the organization's mission and service is, and you have that opportunity and responsibility to translate what you do to those grander uh, missions and vision, mission and vision statements. So, um, you know, reach out to me. I'm, I, that's what I'm all about. It's my passion. It's my purpose. Um, I love it. So, um, so that's pretty much it. I am introducing a new feature to the newsletter, the thought for the month. Um, this month's thought is about um, purposeful presence, and I hyperlinked um, a really interesting article that uh, was written. It was a concept analysis on what does presence mean in healthcare that I think you might find interesting. So, um, on that note, I'll let you go, and um, we've got lots of exciting activities coming up for the month of May. Please check out the calendar um, on my website, caringessentials.net, and as always, take care and care well. Thanks so much for listening. Bye!